In this video, we will learn about the anatomy and the physiology of the large intestine, also known as the colon. Finally, towards the end of the video, I will introduce colon cancer. The colon or large intestine is approximately 150 centimeters in length. It is divided into a few sections. The small intestine here will join to the first part of the large intestine, known as the cecum. Then there is the ascending colon, the transverse colon, descending colon, zygmoid colon, and finally the rectum. Waste is excreted through the rectum and anus. The appendix here is a pouch structure that connects the cecum and is thought to have a role in the immune system. The colon's major role is to absorb vitamins, water, and ions, as well as the transfer and storage of waste. Let's take a section of the colon. These three longitudinal fibers that run along the colon are called tinea coli. The tinea coli runs along all segments except the rectum. Now let's look at the layers of the colon. The very top layer of the colon closest to the lumen is the mucosa layer. These are the colon cells, which are mostly columnar epithelial cells. And, this, and these cells, they form crypts. And these are all crypts. The next layer is the submucosa, sub as in below, so below the mucosa. The submucosa is the connective tissue layer that contains nerves, blood supply, and lymphatics. Here we have the arteries that supply the cells and veins that leave the area. Then there is the muscularis, which is the muscle layer. There are actually two muscle layers. We have the inner muscle layer where we have circular muscles, and then the outer muscle layer where we have longitudinal muscles. The outermost layer of the large intestine is connective tissue layer called the serosa. After the serosa, we can find various structures such as lymph nodes that connect with lymph vessels that reach the mucosa layer. Now let's have a closer look at the mucosa layer and at these columnar epithelial cells here. So here we have the colon cells. Above the colon cells, we have mucus, which is a liquid type substance that helps lubricate food as well as protect the lining of the digestive tract from dangerous microbes as well as from toxic substances. Now in the colon there is a relatively thick mucus layer and then a thin mucus layer on top of that. Residing above the mucus and within the lumen are bacteria. These bacteria are called the gut microbiota. Humans and their gut microbiota have a symbiotic and mutualistic relationship. The colon cells, they all arise from the cells within the crypts, because within the crypts we have stem cells that migrate up. These transit cells will move up where they will finally differentiate into different types of cells. And after some time, once they progressively move up, they will begin to shed, allowing new cells to arise from the bottom again. Therefore, you can think of it as a cycle, where cells keep renewing. The stem cells will eventually differentiate into four main types of cells. These are the goblet cells that secrete mucus, your regular colonocytes, which are your, again, typical columnar epithelial cells, Stem cells can also differentiate into endocrine cells that secrete hormones and peptides that maintain homeostasis of the gut. Now, in the colon, there can also be paneth cells that arise from stem cells during development. However, these paneth cells are confined in the small intestine after some time. Now that we have a better understanding of the colon, let us focus 
on colon cancer. Colon cancer is where there is uncontrolled growth of colon cells, and these cells can later invade other tissues. So let us look at an example. Here we have a colon. These red mushy looking things are tumors. Tumors are abnormal growths. Neoplasia is another word that is used in interchangeably with tumor. Neoplasia essentially means new growth. Now cancer is a type of tumor that usually grows rapidly and is malignant. So what does malignant mean? Well, let's first have a look at a simple explanation of the development of cancer. So here we have a normal colon. The chromosome, the DNA of this normal colon, have minimal to no mutations, and so is quite healthy. However, mutations can and do occur in our body. And so this normal colon can develop a benign polyp. A polyp is a tumor, but it is not cancerous because it is benign. Sometimes polyps are called adenomas if they are big enough. Polyps are slow growing, capsulated and non-invasive. A polyp develops because of possible mutations in the DNA that give rise to them. Usually, people undergo surgery called colonoscopy to remove these polyps in case they are or can become cancerous. Now, some adenomas, they can progress and become carcinomas. Carcinomas are the deadly ones. They are malignant. Carcinomas are cancerous. They grow rapidly, are uncapsulated, and are invasive. For colon carcinomas to develop, for example, we would expect to see multiple mutations in the DNA of many chromosomes. Carcinomas and big tumors also usually have a lot of blood supply, as these abnormal growing cells require many nutrients. Therefore, in and around tumors, a process called angiogenesis occurs, which is the formation and maturation of blood vessels. A good way to understand what is happening in tumors and cancer is that there is more cells dividing than there are cells dying. Now let us look at the stages of colon cancer. Some people have different classifications of cancer and colon cancer. This is one of them. Now there are five stages in total. Briefly looking at the anatomical layer of the colon, from the top we have the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis, and serosa. We can also find lymph nodes following these layers. Stage 0 is basically when we have abnormal cells in the mucosa layer that will keep dividing, forming a polyp. The polyp is usually benign. Stage 1 is where the tumor has spread to the muscle layer and things may be getting serious. Stage 2, the tumor has spread through the colon wall towards the serosa. Stage 3, the tumor has spread through nearby lymph nodes. And then we have stage 4, which is the terminal stage called metastasis. This is where the cancer cells have metastasized and have begun invading other tissues and organs by traveling through the blood and, or and lymphatics. The cancer cells can invade other organs such as the liver, lungs and bone. And that concludes the video on the colon and an introduction to colon cancer. There will be another video that will look into greater detail at colon cancer, specifically colon cancer carcinogenesis.